Hi, I'm Stefan Kesting, and this is the top secret Indonesian sea lot escape to the Triangle Choke. Now, once upon a time, I came back from a Daniel Santo workshop on Indonesian sea lot. I mean, sea lot is this hugely complicated family of martial arts from Indonesia. And I just come back, I was all enthused about it, and I went to jiu jitsu class, and there was a guy like, oh, yeah, I'm like, really? How would they get out of a Triangle Choke? It's like, they've got a great Triangle Choke escape. So I went, and I put on my gi, and into my gi, I slipped a training knife, which I happened to have in my bag. So, true story. So I let the guy put me in a triangle choke. This way. And then let him get it. And then, okay, now here's the escape. So I pulled out the knife and I stabbed him here, which is a very sensitive area. <laughs> and then I stabbed him in the armpit, which of course got a brachial artery. Then I stabbed him here, then I cut. Then I stabbed him in the kidneys multiple times. Then I switched and hit him in there. And then it took about that long for him to realize what was going on, because I was just doing these weird little motions, and the whole time, if it had been a sharp knife, he would have been dead 10 times over. Absolutely. There were a whole lot of arteries, you know, in the armpit, in the throat, uh, in the stomach. We got your kidneys, um, we got your perineum, mm -hmm. um, and there were a whole lot more other targets that I could have gotten as well. So it was interesting how long it took this guy to realize that he had brought, you know, a triangle to a knife fight, or that a knife had been brought to a triangle fight. And I think jiu-jitsu is a fantastic art for self-defense. I think jiu-jitsu is arguably the best martial art for self-defense. But it's easy to get tunnel vision. If you forget that this is a factor, or that a gun could be a factor, or that multiple opponents could be a factor, you could be going down a bit of a blind alley. So I think actually really important, once in a while, you don't have to do it super often, once a year, you should practice grappling with this. How does, okay, put me in the closed guard, please. Mm -hmm. How does the closed guard change if I have this and Rob doesn't? Exactly. Now, pretty much our entire focus, or 99% of our focus, becomes on this. How does my guard passing change if Rob has this and I don't? I'm good, <laughs> exactly. This is what, forget about, you know, never cross center line with your <laughs> arm. <laughs> How about not getting your throat slit with a knife, right? Like, I'm in good posture. <laughs> so once in a while, with a non-insane training partner, because it's pretty easy to put out an eye, you should practice rolling with a knife, rolling with a stick. If you're a law enforcement person, have a training gun, um, even if it's just a foam gun or a plastic gun, and practice doing all the jiu-jitsu stuff with the addition of this. And so, you know, much as I love jiu-jitsu, and much as I think it's a fantastic starting point for self-defense, you have to do a little bit of extra training. Once in a while, you should train with gloves and practice getting hit, even if all you're doing is sport jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, you should train with a knife and a sane training partner. Once in a while, you should train with a stick on the ground. And uh, I think it'll make you a much better rounded martial artist. It'll make you much safer in street confrontations. And if you ever do use your jiu-jitsu, It'll make it a little bit less likely that you get tunnel vision. Like, ha, I got an arm bar. Yeah, but the guy just got your, uh, the artery in your inner thigh and you're bleeding to death, which would be a bad thing. And because you're watching my YouTube channel and because you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and because you're subscribed to my newsletter, I love you and I'd like you to not to die from a knife in a triangle fight.